Axe came and played us. Shit, they, they, they were going to play us, and they were going to go fast. Don't let them get lined up. Don't let them be multiple. Go quick. Get the ball out. Spray the ball out. And they want to be fast to get those things out. So we as a defense said, we don't want to make people limit us to what we do. We don't want to walk out of there and say, well, we couldn't shoot all our guns because they were going fast. Because they're sitting over on offense saying, if we go fast, they won't be able to shoot all their guns. So I, I don't believe in backing down from what you do because the team goes fast. I believe in getting lined up and doing it faster. Now, what happened to us, we couldn't build pressures based on where the back was or build pressures based on, well, this formation do this and this formation do that. No, we came up with field boundaries. We came up with things that were automatic but would give them trouble. And the beauty of mint, of odd defense, you have more depth in your defense. Now, Todd Orlando taught us that. Schumann was with me when we met with him. I said, I don't understand. I'm not very smart. I'm from Bainbridge. I, said, I don't know what depth in the defense means. And he said, we got more people standing up that can fire from different places. So when you're four down, it's kind of like war. They know where you're at. They are going to blow your ass up eventually. Okay. When you got three guys down, you've now got the multiple of eight that can come from anywhere in any, any, any place. And we felt like that defensively made us better and gave us more multiples. Okay. I'm going to let Shu take this over. And like I said, Schumann has done a tremendous job for us. It's coming over from Alabama. And everybody talks about our uh, – our, our, our game against Georgia Tech, he had a large part to do with that. He studied the triple option for two years. His dad coached it for a long time. His dad, Eric Schumann, coached at UAB in a lot of different places, about Austin State included, and he did a tremendous job putting a stop to that. So if you want to stay with him for an hour after this, he can go through triple option with your ass too. And uh, I don't know how many people still play that because we, we don't see it as much in college anymore. But thank you guys. Um, stick with him and hear this out, and I'm going to recruit some more and try to find some more good players. So thank you. Go dogs. I think when you start, besides our terminology, when you look, the number one issue on defending tempo for us was we had two worlds we lived in when we were three down. Now, you could say that doesn't make us very good coaches, but when we were four down, we were matching up to formation strength. We were going to align our nickel wherever the most receivers were, and that's how we were going to play. When we were three down, we were field and boundary. And so innately, the guys could not get lined up until they got the call. So the first thing we did is said we have to find a way to go and put those things together. Doesn't mean you can't have some field and boundary calls and some matchup calls, but we had to choose a world to live in. And the natural response would be, I would think a lot of guys would say, well, why don't you go field and boundary on everything? That's what we do. But we were getting attacked at a high rate when we were in three down and getting attacked to the boundary. I'm, I'm good. I appreciate it. Hey, can everybody hear me? Oh, it's for the video. Oh, okay. Okay, what do we have? Okay. Now, but so we addressed the body types on the field, but the big deal was we have to find a way to morph it and combine it. So for us, we made it so that we were going to match up in everything. And the main reason why is so that we could get to the ball, then get the call. So if you watch us now, compared to when we were watch, compared to watching us back then, guys are running to where the ball is, and they are turning their heads and almost getting into a backpedal as they go. And that way, they are all looking, and as they're finding the ball, their heads should be turned, getting the signal as they go. It's not a, well, I can't get lined up, I don't have to call. If you're near the ball and they snap it, now I can go and, and I mean, the name of the game is hit. So worst case scenario, you don't get the call, you are near the ball, you can still strike somebody. So that's how, you know, we wanted to change it. Now when you look at it, here we are when we were playing against Ole Miss before we went this way, and now we were playing field and boundary defense. But we felt like, why does it make sense for us to have our nickel standing out here to the field covering grass? Especially with the way the hashes are, they were still able to threaten us vertically. So if you watch this clip, if you watch this clip, we're sitting here, we're in what we called base bench at the time, three down field and boundary defense. And we have the nickel over here, and they're running verticals. And it was actually the theme of the year. This was part of the Ohio State year. The theme of the year was three or four times a game about everybody we played, lined up trips in the boundary, had enough space to go vertical, and they were going to make the throws really short for the quarterback. And so now we're sitting here. we got linebackers having to run with, I mean, Evan Ingram is an athletic tight end or other receivers. They're putting the tight end of the field. You're going here, and we got Xavier Dixon from, from Griffin walked out because we're in three down, and the nickel is standing in the field, and he's out there walked out in space. Now, they don't throw the ball over there, but – when we go and study ourselves, we said, man, we can't. There's too many good athletes 
in college football to sit there and let them dictate the matchups they're going to have if we play field and boundary all the time. So we got wore out this year. It started with West Virginia. They did a really good job. And we said we're going to invest in playing mint front. Mint to me means matchup for the DBs, matchup for the star and the jack, and inside technique. So we had gone from playing base. If they hear the word base in our scheme, base is true two gap. Matchup, inside techniques, inside. People call it tight front, however you want to. We use tight in our regular, our true three, four package. But if we're in nickel, we call it mint. It's the same thing. So a lot of people are calling this tight front. But so now we'll get our star and we'll just watch a couple clips. But he is going to track and every play starts with him saying star left or star right. Now, hopefully the jack linebacker is also finding formation strength and he's trying to line up opposite. So as you train them, you know, they are listening for the call, but they are trying to track each other and be opposite. And that's, that does take a lot of work. It's easier to say, hey, we're going to line up field and boundary all the time. But we don't want, we would rather say we're going to invest the reps to make sure we can get it done so we don't get exploited than take the easy route. And I think what tempo offenses have done is they make you take the easy route in a lot of ways. And so we decided we didn't want to do that. So here you can see they were, they're trying, they run a wheel route over here and looking for the matchup. They don't get a good matchup. They end up getting the nickel, matching the wheel route to the boundary. Guy makes a hell of a play on the wheel route. But in the old days, the way we were playing it, we were gonna, they were going to get our 250-pound outside linebacker guaranteed over there if we hadn't gone to this world. The other reason we like it is a lot of times most people do what? They put the formation in the boundary to attack all the, all the grass of the field in terms of the run game. So we're getting, when the star declares himself, for all the jet sweeps, rocket sweeps, however you want to call it, we're getting a 250-pound man with length out to the field to defend the grass. And so that has been really effective in our mind to say, hey, we get to control and we know where our guys are going to be based on formation on every single play. And I like that from the certainty of knowing, hey, if they line up in two by two, whether they put it to the boundary or to the field, I have confidence that the jack linebacker is going to be exactly where you want them based on the coverage. The nickel is going to be exactly where you want them. And so you have the length of the field and the smaller, faster guys to run down the place of the field. Same deal this year, you know, just having the bigger anchor point over there to the tight end and two by two where we want them. Now, obviously, what most teams do when you're aligning like this, they're going to get in three by one, and they're going to attack the C area to the field. So that's where when you say, well, why, if you guys love three down so much, why are you 60-40-4 down this year? And last year you were 60-40-3 down. A lot of it is how we're being attacked in that game. We, hey, if we're sitting there getting attacked to the field a bunch, we're going to jump in four down enough that we're going to sit there and put a six technique in front of that tight end and, and deny the area they're trying to attack. Or we we're fortunate enough this year to play with a lead a lot of the time, and so we really don't want to rush out of our mint front. And so we're going to jump in four down a bunch. So we would like to be 50-50 as close to every given year, to be honest, and try to you know, make the multiples of what they have to prepare for a lot greater. And, we're, if you, and I got asked, I've been getting asked a bunch over the course of, you know, these weeks on the road. They said, well, what are you guys? We'd like to be 50-50 middle field close to open, too. 50-50 coverage to pressure. We're going to try to rep it that way in practice and rep it throughout to keep the multiples high for the op op opposition. But for us, it ends up being really simple. It's not that much. Okay, so here we are. Now, the next issue. Old days of football, you're sitting there and you have long calls. You're going to tell them what every word means. So our calls in 2009 especially were base under O blitz check dot scorch. And you guys can't even get it out of their mouth. And then you're sitting there and you go base weak jack seven med core check strong. That's still how we install these defenses now. But every single call that's more than about two words is simplified to one word. It's almost, if, if we install a call and it is more then two words, three words at most, it is getting cut to one. But we've had to really stress what the original call was to make sure, because I think what you do when you lose that, because I think, I, I think that's commonplace. I think a lot of you guys probably do that. Hey, this is this word. But kids are learning less defense because you're not actually teaching them what the words mean. So we still start, when we install this call, we still teach them base week, jack, seven meg, core, check strong. And here's what it is. And, until the, and before you even teach them how to play the defense, it's 
tell me what that word, the one word means. We're going to get to that. It's whack. This is whack. Weak jack. And they know the rest. It's seven meg core, check strong. But until they can repeat to you, whack is weak jack, seven meg core, check strong. And what do those parts mean? You can't have guys really adapting and playing on the field. So as we go, you can see from that year, guys are, you see the nickel. He was waiting right there. We're in up in a four down defense. So he's like, okay, I can go to the boundary. You can see guys from the end zone. Not, not even able. We can't even get the signals in in time. Guys don't know where to line up because they don't know what the call is. And you can see Ole Miss, same deal. Here we are. A lot of guys not getting lined up. Now, hey, we're not perfect. You're still, I guarantee you, when you, when you watch it, you're like, man, they don't, they're not lined up. It still happens a lot of times because we sub a lot on defense. But I would think that the amount, we, we track, we, we type chaos on our, you know, on our comment section on the computer in y'all's huddle or whatever, if it says chaos, we're going to track how many snaps of chaos we had on the year, and that number's a lot lower than it used to be. But, so here we go. Now, so under blitzcheck.scorch is now just butter from day one. We check 7 med Cora check strong is now whack. Face strong 3 auto check dot mod bass. Over six month Bronco, devil. So it's everything is going to one that has, but you got to know the parts. So now, not perfect. But chains aren't even set, and for the most part, we got, we got, if we can get 11 hats lined up, that's half the battle. Get them lined up in the general vicinity, to, because most of the time they're going to spray the ball out anyways when they're lining up quick. You go here against Oklahoma. We just call this rope. So this call is rope. It would be over seven bracket Seahawk if it was the long word. But you call rope, line up, you're in four down front, you're playing quarters, and you're good to go. Okay, now, I think this is, uh, you know, for us, we're going to train. Besides those, we're going to get them good at lining up to match up rules, and we're going to get them good at executing those one-word calls and translating what they are in three different ways in terms of simulating fastball and practice outside of live practice reps that were scripted to be fastball. And we do this. Our fastball starts, this first one, is a big part of our summer conditioning program, and we'll do it all summer long, what you can't do with 11 guys. You know, it can be 10 and you can't be across from somebody. But they'll have here, this is generic formation. In the summer when we can't line up against the formation, they'll just have the bags out there. But it is turn up, line. There might be one guy out there that indicates the strength of the formation. But line up as fast as possible. They must get, they must get in their stance and be in position to execute their technique. And it is turn. It's 20-yard cover. They circle. The line of scrimmage is reestablished. They have to get the call and turn and run. So they're going to get three to four reps of this, depending on how many times we want to do it. But it's, it's all about, it's not about the execution of the path, but it is about getting lined up in the technique. It is about make, covering down. And we'll, we start practice with this a lot in season, as right after flex, fastball starts. Ones are up. Twos, when, when they get halfway down the field, our twos are already lined up. But this is a, this is a regular drill for us. Now, we'll also do it as the next progression. That's more of the conditioning way. Now we'll line up, and we will have a formation out there in season, and we'll have the scouts. And it's scripted for success for the offense to guarantee that they can sit there. We know, hey, this look is going to play. They're going to get a big play on this so we can move the ball. And so, same deal. It's cover down. It is, the guy has to be thudded. And until the whistle blows, everybody's covering, just like a normal pursuit drill. This has replaced your traditional pursuit drill. Everybody turn and run. That's a day one, the very first day of practice, you might do the normal, the old school pursuit drill, but this is the new pursuit drill. It's turn, we're moving the ball down the field. You can see the nickel's having to go find where the formation strength is every single time, and it's, and it's really the only way to consistently get, to do, get them to do it in the game. And if you weren't going to practice doing it at this tempo, then you probably do need to play field and boundary. But this is minimal investment on y'all's part and on our part to get it done. Because the guys don't even have to be very good. That you're, you could have, we have our managers go out there and do it. It doesn't matter who, we could all do it. Just use your staff. And then we do this one day a week where we do it against our offense, and it'll replace. So now you're getting, hey, different variables. So you got on air, on your scouts, and then you'll do it good on good. And, you know, this one, if, I'm, if we're being honest, always leaves something to be desired in terms because once you line up 11 on 11, you want it to be good in terms of striking people, in terms of finishing the play. But... We're going to get the execution of the call and cover until the whistle blows and get them forced consecutive reps moving down the field and at least get it 
where it's good on good, nobody can sub and all that, because you guys know that if you do a fastball period live in practice and it's not in a controlled setting, all the offensive guys will sub. And then defensive guys will stay out there. But so here, you're going to make the offense. And it's good for the offense, too, because they're going to have to play their four plays in a row. So if we click through that, and, and they'll hit four, and the second the last play's done, the second group's going. The coaches are split up. So, hey, the linebacker coach and the running back coach are essentially signaling and coaching the second group coming through. The DB, and DB coach, quarterback coach handling the first, and then the third group might be to somebody else. So dividing it up like that so it's continuous motion, and the coaches coach their group for that drill.